You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. of faith, the spirit of the living faith, and of the intelligent faith, the rational faith, and of the faith that is based upon God's word, because faith, the Holy Spirit, comes to guide us up until the altar where God's throne is. And may this faith may move you, my dear listener, so that you can have the courage to obey the intuition and the direction that the Holy Spirit gives you through faith. The Holy Spirit gives faith so that we can obey and that we can act and that we can prove that His promises it's available today as well as it was in the past. Because God is the same. What He was, what he, was he will and He will always be so the faith from the past is the faith of today and will be the faith that comes from the Most High to surround you and to guide you and guide those that are blessed. May God bless you who believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you who believe you say Amen and thanks be to God. Very well, my dear listener, when, when we speak about marriage, when we begin to date, and then comes the engagement, and then marriage comes, all these steps, as you get involved with someone, in order to build a family, the, the love of feelings has no condition to sustain. No feelings are able to sustain a marriage. But the love that we deal in the Bible, because God is love, and the first commandment is to love God above all things. And how can we love God if we do not see Him, if we do not touch Him, if we do not feel Him? How can you love someone that you do not even know how they look? You have no idea on how they look. So, the love that we speak, that we read in the Bible, in regards to faith, it's in regards to faith and so much so that the first commandment of the law of God is that you will not have other gods, meaning that we that we should have faith only to one God alone, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Israel. And I believe in the God of Abraham, I believe in the God of Isaac, I believe in the God of Israel. So you are believing in the person 
who is the Almighty. Even if you do not know Him, but He has been faithful. He was faithful to His servants in the past. He will be faithful to you. So as we build a family, the first step, the first thing that we, we think of is faithfulness. Because love, the love that begins in, in, while dating, is when they love each other. I remember when I was dating Esther, I wanted her badly. And she wanted me as well. So there was love that had much more had much more with the one thing than just the feeling alone. Because how could I love someone that I was just beginning to know? So the love that we that we said or that we speak to each other, it evolves faithfulness. It is involving a surrender. It is involving action and involves also sacrifice. That's when we add to our faithfulness, we also need to add sacrifice. And when we add love, we are adding sacrifice. You know that love that God He requires from us is much more infinitely more, infinitely great than just a feeling, than just a feeling, because a true love is the love that involves true surrender, true commitment in our, of our lives. And when we, when we talk about marriage, when we talk about union, when you project a family, you want to have only that person by your side for the rest of your life, isn't it so? You select someone, I chose Esther to be my wife. So then, from the moment on, we began our relationship of faithfulness, of true surrender, of devotion and sacrifice. We had to bear with one another, I had to bear with her defects, and she had to bear with my defects, so now she had to bear with me, and I had to bear with her. So, when we got into this relationship of bearing one another, dealing with one another, there was order. There was no infidelity. So then we are true loving. And when we, by any chance, we had sustained our relationship based on feelings, only feelings, in the moment of the difficulties, in the moment of the problems, in the moments where we needed to bear with one another, deal with each other, we wouldn't be able to handle it. We would not, we would not be able to sacrifice. So then we verify that this kind of love that involves faithfulness, consideration to one another, true dedication and sacrifice and a true surrender, when we begin to evaluate this kind of love, we are speaking of the love that is in regards to the Most High, the love that involves, that comes from the Most High, that involves faithfulness, this love that involves consideration, and it's also involving a true surrender and sacrifice and only the choice of one God only. So in the same way, just as I consider our relationship, our marriage, 
Esther and I, Como nós o as we consider our marriage, a nossa we consider our faithfulness, our, our love to each other, nossa our consideration to one another, true surrender to one another, our sacrifices to each other, to bear with each other, it's the same in regards to God. When we consider God as the first in our life, with our faithfulness towards Him, dedication, sacrifice, it is obvious that we do not have to bear with God because God is perfect. He has no defect, but He he bears with our defects. He knows how we are filled with mistakes. And even though He bears with us, and our love towards Him must be also 100%. He must be first in our life because we had nothing to lose. We only have to gain with Him. We only have to gain. Because what do we have to offer to God? When I got married to Esther, what I, could I offer her? I had to offer myself. I had some virtues, but uh, most of it were mistakes. And what did she have for, for me? She also had her mistakes, her faults, her weaknesses. So then, we had to bear with each other and to match our genes, our way of being. We had to, to combine and agree and adapt to one another. It was not easy, as it is not easy with anyone. It was hard, but because because of the oath that we made on the altar, then our love was, was being placed in evidence through sacrifices, through surrender, dedication, and so on. The same is with God. And with God, it's a greater difference. We placed on, on the altar what we are, what we have. The way we are, we come and give to God. Jesus says, come as you are. And we came. And what did, and what did He offer to us? He offered us everything. The plenitude of life, abundance of life. A life with abundance, He wants to offer us. The salvation of our soul, forgiveness. What man would not forgive, Jesus has already forgiven. The understanding that we wanted from others and we did not receive from others, God, He completed through the Lord Jesus. He accepted us the way we are, the way we, we were. And this is too wonderful. This is great love. And what guarantees, who guarantees that He has accepted us? Who guarantees that we only gain with Him and He had to bear with us? What guarantees? Our faith. And what faith? The certainty, the conviction. You know, that conviction that is within us. And then, what takes place? This conviction within you comes from the Holy Spirit. He gives us faith exactly for this purpose, so that we can choose and make God first in our life. Above all things, above everything, above our own will and desire, above our passions, above all our projects, personal projects we may have. I remember, I recall, and I always mention this, once I was walking the street to my workplace, thinking on my projects, young man, I was a youth, about 18, 19, almost 19 years old. And I was going to the church, I would take part of the services, 
tinha aceitado I Jesus had accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior many times. Mas eu pensava But then I would think eu pensava on my life, my projects, things that I wanted. Fazendo. I was going to, to school, college, and I was in the engineering field, and I was preparing myself and thinking as I was walking the street about my projects and dreams that I wanted. And it was when the Holy Spirit strongly, he spoke strongly within me and said, what is the point of you gaining the whole world and losing your salvation? The Holy Spirit only spoke that. What is the point of you getting, gaining the whole world and getting all your projects out there and losing your own soul? When I heard that, it was like my eyes were open instantly. You know that when the Holy Spirit speaks, He doesn't leave any doubts. He does not leave any trace of doubts in your mind. It can be the devil at your, at, in front of you. Hell can come before you and it will not overcome that objective of that voice and the certainty of what he told you. So what's the point of you gaining the whole world and lose your soul? And in that moment, I began to weigh down my life. I began to see my dreams and my projects and then immediately I answered and said, No, Lord, let your will be done in my life. I will go to do your will. From that day on, the desire of that wanting to study and to conquer and to get a degree and get a profession to get that, that good profession, making money, all that faded away. Those dreams I had faded away. I, I continued studying, but I didn't have that passion, that, that ambition within me, that objective. I continued my studies. I continued my studies. I didn't stop there, gave up everything and began to live a life. No, but my priority became God. So this is, took place when I met Esther. When I met Esther, so my priority my priority was to have her with me because I knew that she was the one directed by the Holy Spirit. It was God who sent her. It was the Holy Spirit who gave her to me. So then I knew it was real. And from that day on, I had no eyes to nobody else. It was only to her and only her. So then, this is what takes place when the Holy Spirit speaks with us. We only have, we only have ears to hear the Most High, to what He has to say, our projects, dreams, and to do what He wants. Everything else, my wills, desires, are subjected to my Lord for Him to be glorified in my life. I only want to do His will. It doesn't matter if that will goes against mine. Let my will be done. From the moment that the Holy Spirit speaks, what's the point of you gaining the whole world conquering your dreams and then lose your salvation, lose your soul. My dear listener, when we choose the Lord Jesus as our Lord, He becomes the first in our life. He becomes first in our life. And then it's like what we spoke in the beginning. Then it comes faithfulness, love, consideration, 
fear and a true surrender, sacrifice, we deny our own selves, our will to do God's will. And we always say, let your will be done. Let your will be done here in my life. Assim também this é o casamento. is how marriage is. Marriage envolve involves this. Involves love, faithfulness, consideration to one another, a true surrender to each other, sacrifices, and is also involving to tolerate, to tolerate the other person. You tolerate the other person. You tolerate their faults. Just as we, as our, our faults are tolerated by God, we tolerate from our partner as well. But my life began to be and to belong to my Lord, so then I live in function of my Lord, of His will, His holy will. In the same way, when I got married, Esther, began to be the first in my life. Of course, God was first, but then Esther, Esther was the first in my life. So then she began to be the center of my life here on earth, my physical life here. In other words, when anything that I would go about or anywhere I would be, I would share it with her. I would share it with her. I couldn't do or eat something in the street that's delicious, a dessert, without getting a piece, a piece or a part of it, even the whole piece or getting one, one more for her. Why? Because she was first in my life. So this is how the tithe is to God. Tithe means first fruits. The first fruits. First fruits. The first fruits. The first fruits, the first fruits we offer and we give back. We do not offer. We give back to the one who is the Lord in our life. And then I ask, may, you may ask, but Bishop, does, be, does God need money? No, God does not need anything. But the first fruits that we give on the altar symbolizes symbolizes and shows and proves that He is my Lord. It's like the ring. We spoke about this. The ring in our finger. The ring symbolizes a commitment that I have with Esther. I have a commitment with my wife. It's here. It's marked in, my, in the ring in my, in my finger. The same way is the ring in her finger that she is committed to me. So, what is the commitment or sign of commitment between me and my Lord? The tithe. The tithe, the first fruits. There is no other, there is no other way in a physical way that is touchable. It's through the tithe. It's not my coming to the church that proves it, that I am of God, that I am a God's servant, that He is the Lord in my life. I can go to the church, I can even live inside the church and do not serve Him. There are numerous people, numerous pastors, bishops, auxiliaries, people that work, officials of the church, that they do their jobs just to do as it is a profession. A people that serve themselves and not God. But when we return to God the first fruits of everything that He has given us, so then we are giving a sign that we are His servants giving a sign. There are people that they are servants of God 
They are faithful tithers. In the little, but as they begin to receive much, then they begin to derail and to think that they are giving too much. They forget that God is the owner and He is being the one who gave. Whether He gives you a little bit or much, He is the owner. He, he says, those that are faithful in the little will be faithful in much. But if the person is not faithful in the little bit they have, how can they be faithful in much? So then, God, my dear listener, He is expecting this from you. He is expecting for you to show to yourself, prove to the world, and prove to the devil that He is the Lord of your life. When you put Him and when you return to Him, the first fruits on the altar. I came here, my Lord, to tell you it was good knowing you. For I want more of you In your name I trust all oh my Lord I have your love But I want more of you Oh, my. 